So the iPhone 10 is finally here. And although it boasts a slew of new features like an all-screen display, wireless charging, fast charging, a better camera, as well as things like Face ID and Animoji, is it really the future of the iPhone? And is it really worth a thousand dollars? Hey guys, it's Dan with SmartFox and today we're going to be doing an in-depth review into Apple's new iPhone 10. So check it out. Now, as usual, I'm not going to get too deep into the technical specifications of the iPhone 10 as it relates to other iPhones, but I will put a link in the description for Apple's website so you can compare it to the other current iPhone line, that is the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. The main thing I do want to touch on as it relates to that is the size of the iPhone 10. This is a new iPhone size for Apple and it fits between the size of the standard iPhone series and the standard iPhone Plus series. So by now you've probably either read or heard that the iPhone 10 is the best iPhone Apple's ever made and although Apple does say that every year, this time it's much more significant. Right out of the box, the iPhone 10 is clearly the nicest iPhone Apple has ever made and significantly nicer than any of the iPhones before it. It just feels and looks like a premium phone, much more so than even the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, this isn't a factor for many people, and the truth is, once you put a case on it, it's going to be hard to distinguish it from any other iPhone until you look at the screen. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you're considering buying the iPhone 10 because of its screen size, Apple does list its screen size as 5.8 inches compared to the 5.5 inches of the iPhone Plus series, but that's measured diagonally. And Technically, the iPhone 10 is just a hair wider than the regular iPhone, which makes the interface on the screen generally smaller than that of an iPhone Plus series. The iPhone 10 does have a taller display than the iPhone Plus series, but as far as text sizes and things like that in most applications, this doesn't make any difference because the iPhone 10 again, has a narrower screen size, which makes text and things like that smaller and more comparable to the regular sized iPhone. And this is especially true for applications that have not yet been updated or optimized for iPhone 10. In this case, uh, Outlook for iOS creates software bezels on the top and bottom of the iPhone 10, making the screen size on the iPhone 10 almost exactly the same size as the screen on a regular sized iPhone. And although the difference is ever so slight, I've also noticed that this affects the size of images when you're looking at them in an application in portrait mode. With a lack of a physical home button, there's some notable changes in the way you perform some basic tasks on the phone. So let's get into those now. Once you've initially set up Face ID during the walkthrough of your setup, it's very easy to use. And by leaving the default raise to wake feature on with the iPhone 10, when you raise the phone, you simply swipe up and you're in. That's how quickly it scans your face. Again, raise up, swipe up, and you're in. We found this to work very consistently both outside and inside, and it's at least as consistent as Touch ID, although it is a tiny bit slower to get in. And although I'm not going to show it here because it's mostly used, at least in our case, with financial applications, you can also use Face ID to authenticate with those so you don't have to log in. And although I've seen in other reviews where they swipe down from the left-hand corner to get to notifications, you can also still swipe down from the middle to get to your notifications, so nothing new there, although you will see at the bottom there's now a button for the camera and for the flashlight, and you 3D touch on either of those to make them come up. Now what is different is in the upper right hand corner you can no longer see the battery percentage unless you scroll down just a bit and then you can see it in the control center and on that note that's also how you access the control center by swiping down in the upper right hand corner. In every iPhone before this that had control center that was performed by swiping up from the bottom which is no longer the case. One of the new interface changes with iPhone 10 that I have personally found most challenging is the ability to pull up the list of all running applications so that you can switch from one app to the other and also so that you can swipe away the applications that you'd like to close. After using the iPhone 10 for the past couple of days, I've discovered the trick is to swipe up from the bottom and then hold for just a moment. That's when the app switcher will appear and you can scroll between apps. And if you'd like to close an app that's running, you have to hold down on that app for just a moment 
until you see the little minus sign in the upper left hand corner, then you can either click on that or simply swipe away the application as with previous iPhones. Using Siri on iPhone 10 is a little different as well. You hold down the now larger lock screen button and that's how you get Siri. To take a screenshot on iPhone 10, you click the volume up button and the lock screen button at the same time. If you need to do a hard reboot on your iPhone 10, it's perhaps the strangest procedure yet. You essentially click the volume up button, volume down button, and then hold down the new larger lock screen button. This does take about 15 seconds to reboot, but I'm speeding up for the sake of the video. One thing I wanted to touch on here regarding the camera bump on the back is that it's significantly bigger than any camera bump on any iPhone before it, to the point that it actually has a notable wobble if you set it face up on a hard surface like a table. This is easily resolved by putting it into a standard case, just like the Apple case we've been using in this review. And again, we do recommend a case because of how easy it is to break the iPhone 10. And just like the iPhone 8 series, the iPhone 10 supports Qi wireless charging, Apple sells several of these charging pads, but you can pick them up for as little as $10 or $11 on Amazon. I think the one we purchased here costs $10. It has a light to show when it's charging, and although it does charge a little slow, it works quite well. Since the iPhone 10 is aware of when you're actually physically looking at the screen, it'll show things like reminders and text messages as alerts, and then reveal the actual content of the preview when you look at the screen, which is really a cool feature. Another interesting feature with the iPhone 10 and exclusive to the iPhone 10 is the ability to take a portrait mode selfie and we'll have some examples of that later in the review. Another new feature of the front facing camera on the iPhone 10 is what Apple's referring to as an emojis. These are essentially a group of emojis that actually track the movements of your face so that you can send your own voice and your own expressions inside an animated emoji. And although I can't see myself using this feature that often, I would expect the Snapchat generation are going to love it, so be on the lookout for more Animojis. So let's wrap up this review by covering the greatest two features of the iPhone 10, and that is the camera and the display itself. Regarding the display, this is Apple's first OLED type display, and at the risk of getting down into the technical deep dive, Let's just say this is the absolute best screen we have ever seen on an iPhone ever before, including the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. Pictures and videos look amazing, and we really just cannot say enough good things about this screen. And although there has been concern regarding the notch at the top of the screen on the front-facing camera and how that might be a distraction from looking at pictures or videos, we found that it's really not a distraction at all within the first minute or so. And if it really bothers you, you can watch videos in Letterbox, which trims it down so that you can't see the notch. Although it does make the screen size a little smaller when you do that. So let's talk about the new camera. One thing we noticed right away is that portrait mode seems to work much better in low light as with the iPhone 8 series. And outdoors, portrait mode looks fantastic. And although I did find it pretty cool to be able to take portrait mode selfies, this feature is listed as being in beta by Apple, and you can certainly tell with the sort of artifact going on around the heads, and sometimes it'll cut off your ears or even your hair. But uh, overall, it works pretty well when compared to the regular selfie camera not using portrait mode. And like the iPhone 8 Plus, the rear-facing camera takes amazing photos, both with the telephoto lens and with the wide-angle lens, and in low-light scenes. And it's also pretty cool to now be able to record slow-mo videos at 1080p 240 frames per second. So this has been a bit of a long review, but if you've made it this far, then you likely suspect that we're big fans of the iPhone 10. Once you get past the changes in design and interface, we think you'll find the build quality, the screen quality, and the overall experience of using the iPhone 10 is better than any iPhone before it. Whether or not it's worth $1,000 is certainly going to be up to the individual, but considering the iPhone 8 series only cost a couple hundred dollars less, we consider it a worthwhile technology investment. That wraps up our review of the iPhone 10. 
you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe or at least give it a like. Thanks a lot and we'll see you in the next one.